I'm Phil Nolan. I direct the Getty Leadership Institute. The American Association of Museums Center for the Future of Museums has posed seven intriguing questions dealing with the next two decades. They are each in a different way, shaped by an underlying question. Are museums places to which or places from which? Are museums destinations or sets of varied resources that transcend their physical locations and the limits of their buildings? Universities used to be thought of as existing within their campus boundaries. And while Harvard is still certainly in Cambridge and Stanford in Palo Alto, their heightened importance to society resides in arrays of interactions beyond the campus, teaching internships in the public schools, research partnerships with business and industry, online classes available around the world 24-7, and televised academics shaping the public mind on issues ranging from stem cell research to presidential history. On the other hand, there are organizations and services that have limited themselves as places to which, and they are declining. Movie theaters and record stores, for example, and yet others are disappearing entirely, travel agencies and pay telephone booths. Of course, one might protest that museums are rather more like restaurants than universities. One must go there to benefit from them. Putting aside for a moment the increasing popularity of delivered takeout, even from fine restaurants, Alice Waters' Chez Panisse has transcended its address in North Berkeley to become a societal force advocating for farmers' markets, sound and sustainable agriculture, and educational programs such as the Edible Schoolyard that demonstrate the transformative power of growing, cooking, and sharing food. Transcending a location has never been a strategy that diminishes the enterprise as a destination, far from it. What happens on the campus, or indeed in the restaurant, becomes more powerful, more evident, and therefore more attractive because of the varied interactions the organization stimulates in the real and virtual communities beyond its walls. By analogy, the National Geographic Society is more influential having transcended the limitations of its magazine without diminishing it. What possibilities might open if museums began to lead from, as well as to, their locations, began to act as societal forces, increasing scientific and historical knowledge among the non-museum going public, to engage in civic discourse about the growing encroachment of ugliness in the built environment, to enter the debate about arts, humanities, and science in public education, and to provide information relevant to broad public policy decisions. The fundamental challenges are institutional complacency and fear of the new and unknown. Is it not unacceptable for public institutions like museums to be so limited by their location, and in that sense at least so ordinary? This is the most basic responsibility of leaders, to demand the most of themselves, of others, and of the institution for which they have responsibility. In this spirit, I hope museums will move beyond their comfortable street addresses in order, paraphrasing Toynbee, the better to advance society's culture, capacity for compassion, sense of community, and strength of democracy.